Stanley Borkin on boxing, the legend that lived, the greatest hey. promoter that ever lived. Uh, no one needs to be here. Don King is, and, and that's what you said, the accountability. You've always been one that's been accountable, creditable. Don King stands on his word and brings out only the best. That is it. And didn't I tell it like it is? When you give an analysis of whatever it is, you don't allow yourself uh, to go out and lie to the public and go out and make excuses about this and that. That was no excuse for that can be made. Your performance sells it all. And I think that in boxing, you know, many people have called me many things that have done all kind of ways. I'm still standing. That is the, what really grounds me. Why? Because my integrity with the people, no matter what they write or say, the people give me the boost. When I slip and fall, they dust me off and strip me right back up because they know that I'm one of them. You know what I mean? So I, lo I love boxing. I love this sport. It's the greatest sport in the world because it's man-to-man. -man. You can't call time out and send in a substitute. You got to be able to deal with it. If you run out of gas, there ain't no petrol station in sight. You know what I mean? You got to be able to agree, keep it real. And so I think we got a sport here. Now we need is some heroes like uh, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, and they don't come every other day. You got to just keep searching. But the networks have let us down because they don't put the sport on. And now they're finding out that they got scandals in other sports because they don't have boxing to kick around anymore. You know what I mean? So now you find out that's what it would be. So I look at it, hey, take it with a grain of salt, but keep on pushing. Boxing has been scandalized so bad that ain't too much more you can do to that because you're already persecuted and prosecuted and, 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 and sent into the guillotine. All right? But it still survived. Irrespective and irregardless of the doomsayers, naysayers, and ill-sayers, it still survived. So now we just got to get out there and get us some heroes, you know what I mean? But we're going to need the support of all these networks that were using them boxing to be able to get their ratings and whatnot, they got to go back to it now because you can't just find that, in other words, no man's an island in time to himself. You know? now, it seems that you have a zeal to, for long as to, to unify the heavyweight division and you, you're bringing another uh, great card here. I mean, that seems to be your one desire, unification, one heavyweight champion. I've been trying to do that. As you know, the double standard, the discrimination that they play on me is, uh, is nothing new, but I just want to voice it so that you realize in case you were asleep, I'm going to take you out of that Rip Van Winkle's 20 years uh, uh, somnia, you know, because what they have done, I had all four belts, and I was trying to get them to organize, to get all the networks applying to them to help do this thing here. So they maneuvered and they got, to, they got me out of the belts, you know, so I don't have the belts. You know what I mean? All I have is the desire. They're still playing the game, you know what I mean? So what they're doing is more than trying to help boxing, they're trying to fight me. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's, a, it's a very difficult thing for them to do to fight me because I'm the people. You know what I mean? And you can't do, you can do anything with public opinion. You can do nothing without it. And so what I want, the masses of the people is what makes me tick. So therefore, they can't deal with me because I'm a promoter of the people, for the people, and by the people. And my magic lies in my people ties. So what they have to do now is the unification, that stands supreme. They can't get around it. They got this, they, they should do it in a tournament fashion. And if I get an opportunity, I'm going to restate the claim to do the same thing that we did before that bought us on Tyson. You know what I mean? And do the same thing that brought us to Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? To unify. You know what I mean? Putting him up against George Foreman and putting the WBA and the WBC at that time. So now you got to do the same thing today to bring all these champions together and then let them fight. And you get one undisputed champion. You got a hero to the public and they can relate and identify with. In the meantime, you got contenders then that will be searching to make a name for themselves. But now you don't have, you don't have a pool of heavyweights to supply four heavyweight champions. So each one of them is mismatches. Perpetrating the fraud. Yes, that's all, really. You know, with good intent, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not with the desire, you know, to do it, but just because the happenstance that they don't have too much to work with. You know what I mean? But if you had one undisputed champion, you could all be going up to that one undisputed champion, one that the kids can relate and say, hoorah, hoorah, you know, I want to be like him. We don't know who they are. I don't even know who they are. So, you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's a remarkable feat that boxing is still standing as it is, but it will be coming back because you got guys like Jim Dolan and Chuck Nolan that are not only that they make money with the public, they want to give something back. And they continue to give back now and to bring boxing in, I think Jim Dolan is just superb. You know what I mean? It makes me feel good to have someone that you can work with that is truly cognizant and sympathetic and empathetic to the frustrations of the public. And they're going to try to relieve you. How do you spell relief? J-I-M. D-O-L-A-N. You know what I mean? So look forward to that. Jim Dolan. Jim Dolan. Hear my cry. B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. 
Are you forced? Yes, yes, yes. Jim Dolan. Jim Dolan, you're the best. Don King, Marion Borton says all roads lead to Don King. This fight here to do is you're working again with them. You said this is a fight that you're excited about. These two guys are going to fight. No waltzing around like last week's card. No holding and grabbing. Don't like each other. They're going to be throwing down. They're going to throw down, man. This is what an old-time, old-fashioned brawl. And we say Pier 6 brawl, where they'll be fighting coming off the boats. You know what I mean? These two guys not only don't like each other, but they want to fight for bragging rights. And the bragging rights is more important than the money. Otherwise, why would two athletes that have an opportunity to make millions of dollars jeopardize that, knocking each other in the head for free? You know what I mean? But that shows you how this fight, the intensity that's here. This is the embodiment of championship boxing. And what you're going to have is the guys fighting without having a title label on it. You're going to get the quality of those who would be fighting they're fighting for their life. They're fighting for their wife. They're fighting for their mothers. And they're insulting each other and they're throwing blows at each other. And so our job is to keep them separated. So this is a strategic exercise we're doing in here. You know, we have to be very careful how you use it. It's like nitroglycerin. You have to be able to careful how you move it. And it's a nitro situation here now, but it'll be in a nuclear bomb when it explodes on September 8th at the Staples Center. And Tim Lywicki, you better be ready, baby. You know what I mean? Because you got a heavyweight fight coming through there. It's going to be something kind of different, as we say in the vernacular of the ghetto, a marvelous affair. Now, last question. Everybody says that Mayweather is the best fight in the world, pound for pound. Your opinion on that? I like Mayweather, and I think Mayweather is standing tall now with all the guys that he's fighting. The thing is, Mayweather is the master of the sweet science, to hit and not get hit. And it's, you know, while that is uh, an impeccable uh, 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 reputation and an impeccable exercise of the being able to have the agility, the dexterity, the lateral movement to do that, it is not visually you know, appealing to look at. You know what I mean? So he's a victim of his own success, his own greatness. You know what I mean? Because he is a master boxer. And the sweet science is to hit and not get hit, to stick and move. You know what I mean? Now you see me, now you don't. Well, he exemplifies that, but people want to see a brawl. You know what I mean? They want to see a fight. You know what I mean? And we recognize that when Oscar and him fought, that's what, uh, that's what he did. And so it became a dull affair. The fight that we saw last week, you could have went to sleep on. You know, you know what I mean? It was unbelievable. I'm, I'm surprised if anybody even bought it. But the idea of it is, that's what you have. You know, unless you got a firebrand on the other side that's going after, but two defensive fighters, you know what I mean? And it, 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 it became something, you know what I mean, that you can look at it when you're fighting writers that are writing, and they say anything different from that, and that this is a marvelous, marvelous affair, you have to look at them with a jaundice eye. You know what I mean? What are you taking? You know what I mean? What are you doing? Or what's happening? You know what I mean? We're in the ghetto. You know, we know the streets. You know what I mean? And this thing just don't happen because I ain't never seen a gratuitous a uh, 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 magnanimous writer. You know what I mean? You know, they're all a cynical. What makes a good writer is the cynicism. You know what I mean? He don't believe fat meat is greasy. You know what I mean? And he's always investigating. You know what I mean? And he's he prophesying. You know, and if, if they write and say, oh, what a marvelous fight this is, I have to look at them and take three or four takebacks. That's my alarm. Something is wrong. DK, is there a remote chance that you could ever promote Mayweather? I mean, he doesn't have the kind of notoriety he should have, and you're the greatest to ever do it. Is there a remote chance that y'all could maybe work together down the line? Listen, I would love to work with Mayweather, and I love his advisor, Al Heyman. You know what I mean? Maybe someday we will, maybe we won't. But none of them can promote it because you're right. He does not capture the imagination of the people. He does not touch the pulse of the people. And that's what they don't really know how to do. They, it's, it's easier said than done. Well, I do it, you know, so magnanimously and so, so, you know, without any type of uh, 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 handicap, any kind of what they are. They can't do that, and that's what makes the difference. They can say the same fight. I can when I go, I'm gonna get more money for the same fight that you know that they go, and they can't get that kind of money. You know what I mean? And so whatever they get, I'm gonna get more because I'm gonna bring the people and get them involved to make it happen. I love the people. And the people are my most important assets. Innovation and imagination are my tools. Togetherness for a better America is my goal. So I'm in pursuit of excellence. God bless America. God bless our President George Walker Bush. God bless the American people. Ladies and gentlemen, only in America, the one and only, the legend that lives, Mr. Donald King.